Good evening, and welcome to the Northville Church of Christ Sunday evening worship services. My name is Michael, and I just wanted to go over a few announcements again that I mentioned early this morning in our AM service, as well as some announcements that I may have forgotten. First of all, if this is your first time being here, thank you very much. Please take a moment and visit our website at www.northfieldchurchofchrist.com for some more information. Always feel free to reach out to us too if you are in need, if you have any questions about our church. We meet Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Bible study, followed by 10.30 a.m. worship service, 6 p.m. YouTube service only right here that you're about to watch, and we have a Wednesday evening Zoom Bible study. Now, moving into our announcements, please keep Rit Kramer in your thoughts and prayers as he is resting comfortably. Also keep Noreen, her daughter, in your thoughts and prayers as she's working diligently with her father. Please keep George Mathis in your prayers as he had a complete knee replacement. Also keep um, Natalie in your thoughts and prayers as she's having some issues with the back pain and uh, she's going through therapy right now. So keep her in your thoughts and prayers as well. Also Terry Clevenger with her back issues continues to have some problems there. Please keep her in your thoughts and prayers as well. Elsie is suffering with a little forgetfulness, as we all are at times, so please keep her in your thoughts and prayers as well. And as you know, we will be miking the audience soon so that you'll be better able to hear all the church singing as well as questions and answers during the Bible study. So I thank a lot of people for their help with that, Billy Sherry, Lee Christensen, and that will probably be done this week. So hopefully by next Sunday, you'll be able to hear the great singing that we have. I think that's all the announcements. I just wanted to reiterate a couple that I, I might have missed today or to go over again, and hopefully that clears everything up. And we hope that you are well. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you. So thank you for being here. Without much ado, here's Mark with the Sunday Evening Devotional. Hi, this is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to welcome all of you to the evening services for Sunday, January the 9th. We will, as usual, be singing a few songs from uh, our songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. We will observe the Lord's Supper. And uh, I will have a message for you that I hope will cause you to think just a little bit. So let's open our uh, song service with number 800. And ninety eight nine zero. And so that uh, we can sing all the verses and the song doesn't take forever, we will sing the first four verses and then sing the chorus at the end of the fourth verse. Eight nine zero. In the land of fadeless day lies a city for square. It will never pass away, and there is no night there. All the gates of pearl are made. In the city for square, all the streets with gold are laid, and there is no night there. And the gates shall never close to the city for square. Then will mist all river flows, and there is no night there. There they need 
in the sunshine bright in the city for square for the lamb is all the light and there is no night there god shall god shall wipe away all tears there's no death, there's no death no pain no nor fears, fears. And they come not time by years, by years. For there is no night there. Just a little ways over, 898. Ninety-eight. As I travel through life with the trouble and strife of a glorious hope to give cheer on the way, soon my toil will be o'er and I'll rest on that shore where the night has been turned into day. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. As I roam the hillside or I list to the tide, as I pluck the sweet flowers that grow in the day, a faint picture is there of a land bright and fair where perennial flowers never fail. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Though your garden is rare, it is not to compare with the flowers that bloom in the garden above. In the midst of it grows Sharon's perfect sweet rose. Tis the wonderful flower of love. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. And to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, uh, number 791. 791. <clears throat> On bended knee I come, with a humble heart I come, bowing down before your holy throne. Lifting holy hands to you As I pledge my love anew 
I worship you in spirit. I worship you in truth. Make my life a holy praise unto you. On bended knee I come. With a humble heart I come, bowing down before your holy throne. As I look upon your face, show your mercy and your grace. Change my life, O oh Holy Spirit. Make me fresh and ever new. Make my life a holy sacrifice to you. We are instructed every Lord's Day uh, to gather about the Lord's table. It is said to us specifically in the 20th chapter of Acts in the seventh verse. And now they gather together on the first day of the week to break bread. We do this to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. Uh, that uh, the great plan that our God put into effect, that Jesus would come to the earth in human form, that he would teach, uh, that he would... Um, uh, go to the poor, go to those that needed to be uh, gone to, heal the sick. And finally, he would give himself up as a one-time sacrifice once and for all. The old way would now be gone. There would be no sacrificing of bulls and goats. There would be no more grain offerings because Jesus made the one complete and wonderful sacrifice for each one of us. So as we gather about the table, we want to remember his body and his blood. Uh, let's pray for uh, the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that your plan was so magnificent. And we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to carry it out and give up his body uh, for each one of us. That he uh, went through the pain of the crucifixion. That he was separated for a time from you. And that he did this all so that uh, we could have eternal life with you and your grace would be upon us. Bless us as we partake of this bread. It's in his most holy name that we pray. Amen. We know that before the children of Israel left Egypt and went across the wilderness to the promised land, that the last of the ten plagues dealt with the death of the firstborn. Only those that sprinkled the blood of the lamb on their lamppost were spared. Uh, it is uh, that symbolic blood and the real blood that Jesus shed uh, that we think about when we partake of the fruit of the vine that Jesus allowed his life-giving blood to flow from him, and that blood became the uh, uh, propitiation for our sins, that they might be forgiven. Let's pray for the cup. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful again for your great plan, and we're grateful that Jesus was willing to shed his blood that each of us might have forgiveness of our sins. Help us to understand the power that is in that blood and think of it every time we commemorate this on the Lord's Day. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We are also told to lay by in store on the first day of the week uh, to give back to the Lord that which we have been prospered. We know a few things about giving. Uh, we know that we're supposed to be cheerful givers. Uh, we're supposed to 
uh, give even beyond our means as we think of the widow giving that uh, small amount of money, yet it, it uh, signified all that she had. Help us to understand that in our giving, we're giving back to you what you have blessed us with. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, be with us as we give. Help us to think of the overall picture of giving, of not just giving of our monies, but giving of our talents and giving of our time. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to uh, understand how important giving is and uh, that we should give back to you and give to one another. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the last song we'll sing is number 884. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. 1 and 3 of number 884. <clears throat> Earth holds no treasures but perish with using. However precious they be, yet there's a country to which I am going. Heaven holds all for me. Heaven holds all to me. Brighter its glory will be, joy without measure will be my treasure, heaven holds all to me. Why should I long for the world with its sorrows? When in that home or the sea, millions are singing the wonderful story, heaven holds all to me, heaven holds all to me. Brighter its glory will be. Joy without measure will be my treasure. Heaven holds all to me. That concludes the singing part and the Lord's Supper part of our evening services. And now it's time for uh, the message that I've prepared for you. If you were there this morning, you probably heard uh, the title and wondered uh, what I'm getting at this time. Uh, if, if it sounded provocative, if it sounded like I was trying to be funny, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Sometimes I've been known to do that. You, if you were there, heard that the title of what I'm going to speak about is We're Going to Be Rich. I will start this lesson with a story. Uh, I don't think the story is true, but the story will bring into focus what I'm talking about. It is told that an organization in Montana offered a bounty of $5,000 for every wolf captured alive. It would seem that perhaps there was an overpopulation and they were going to move these wolves to somewhere else. Two hunters, we'll call them Sam and Jed, uh, decided to head for the hills and to make some money capturing wolves. Day and night, uh, they searched the mountains and they searched the forests. But for this amount of time um, and looking for their valuable prey, they found no wolves. Exhausted after three days of hunting uh, without any success whatsoever, they created a nice campsite, uh, built a little fire, and they fell asleep. 
During the night, Sam woke up to find that he and Jed were surrounded by a pack of 20 wolves. They had flaming red eyes and they displayed these monstrous fangs and they were snarling at the two hunters and moving closer and closer for the kill. With that, Sam, who saw it, nudged Jed and woke him up and he said, hey, wake up. We're going to be rich. Okay, you can chuckle if you choose to chuckle, or you can say, oh, that was pretty corny. But whatever the case may be, uh, hopefully you may get the point. Uh, don't you just love people that have positive minds? Don't you love people that look on the bright side of things? Sometimes, not always, but once in a while, we are surrounded by situations that are less than favorable. As a matter of fact, we can go even further than that. We can even say that we're, we're surrounded with terrible situations. We may be in great difficulty. However, with that and with the great difficulty, this difficulty may be accompanied with opportunity. Now, I am not a, <laughs> I have told people before, I'm not a, 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 a Greek master or a, a Roman master, and I am certainly not uh, uh, well-versed in the language of Chinese, but I have heard this. In the Chinese language, the symbol for the word crisis actually combines two words. Those two words are danger and opportunity. Isn't that interesting? Crisis, when broken down, in Chinese, the symbology there is two words, and they are danger and opportunity. And so that puts our lives into focus because we face hardships from time to time. We uh, face crises from time to time. And when we face these crises, how do we act? Probably when we were little children, we were very, very, very frightened. Maybe uh, even to the point where we felt cowardly about it. Um, the Apostle Paul says that will come a time where we will put away childish things. When a man becomes a man, uh, when he was a boy, he thought like a boy, acted like a boy. But when we become a man, we put away childish things. And so now, very often, we look at crises as a time of life that is almost inevitable. It will happen to all of us. So we may choose which avenue we want to take when we are confronted by a crisis. We can either look at it as danger or as an opportunity. We can choose to be frightened and cowardly or strong and courageous. Do you know what? It's really a matter of perspective, isn't it? We all know that there are glass half full people and glass half empty people out there. We know that there are people that think, oh, the worst is going to happen to me. And those that think better things are going to happen to me. And to take it a step further, even if something bad happens to me, how can I turn it around 
and make it not so bad. Is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? Now, think about this and, and we can make application to this lesson, probably not too far in each of our futures. The next time something happens that doesn't flip our switch in the right direction, ask ourselves a question. Can I grow from this experience? Can I grow from this experience, even if it is a negative experience? We have writings in the Bible that uh, I think apply to situations like this. In the eighth chapter of the book of Romans and the 28th verse, the Apostle Paul writes this, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Those are beautiful words. And can we even insert there and, and infer that Paul may be saying, even if something happens in your life that isn't what you expected, isn't what you wanted, is a hardship, um, is, it might be a detriment to you. Remember, in our world, and that is God's world, he tells us that all things can work for good for those that love the Lord. Will God's promise to work for good of those who love him be obvious to all of us? Do we take those words to heart? Or immediately, when something bad happens, do we say, oh, woe is me. Why in the world did this happen to me? Why me again? I just got over something and now something else? Am I being positive? And am I looking for a possible opportunity? Well, you know what? If we turn to the book of James and the very, very first chapter, as James begins his epistle in James chapter 1, if we start at verse 2, he says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you consider various trials. Well, I'm sorry, when you encounter. Let me start again so I, we make sure that we get the thought. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Now, you know what? We don't pray every night for the Lord to heap negative things on us, do we? We almost always pray in the positive. Yet, do we pray as Jesus did uh, when he talked to the Father and he knew his fate of dying on the cross Thy will be done. Okay, thy will be done. And so, when confronted with situations that are less than what we might call acceptable, maybe even uh, situations of great difficulty, um, are we asking ourselves the question, am I being positive and looking for a possible opportunity? I think if we look down really, really deep, we'll find that the answer is yes. One of my favorite Old Testament characters is Joseph. And in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20, after Joseph had his whole world 
collapse around him. All of the negative things that could happen in a person's life happened to him. You know, he was sold in bondage by his own brothers. Uh, when he finally did reach a, a uh, position of responsibility in the household of Potiphar, Potiphar's wife made a play for him. He rejected her and she cried, oh, this guy attacked me and he was put into jail. And after all these things happened, you could have thought that maybe Joseph would have a lot of negative things welling up inside of him. And so when his brothers, knowing that there was food in Egypt, thankful for Joseph, uh, they didn't know that, um, and they came. And finally, when they all recognized one another, he recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Through all of that, through his brothers uh, letting his father think that he had died at the hands of wild animals, Joseph said in Genesis 50, verse 20, God meant it all for good. God realized that his hands are in all things. And then Joseph in turn realized God's hands are in all things. All of this happened for a reason. God allowed negative things to happen so that something positive could happen. And that it would come to a successful conclusion. And it did, didn't it? You know what, in 2 Corinthians, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we know that uh, the Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh. We've tried to figure out what it was. We, we make guesses that it may have been his eyesight. Uh, but if we start with verse 7 of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he said, Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And here it is. Here are God's beautiful, beautiful words. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults and distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Apostle Paul found in his weakness strength because he knew that these things would work for good. And finally, we come to my signature verse in the Bible, and that is Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11. If we go to verse 10, it says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. And now, at last, you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. And here he is. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. 
he learned to be content whether the circumstances were good or the circumstances were bad. And so in keeping with the thought and keeping with the title of my lesson, please, let's all wake up. We're going to be rich. God has promised an eternal reward regardless of things that happen on this earth. If Regardless if more rain falls in our life than sun shines, regardless of that, we're going to be rich. We have an eternal reward waiting for us if we abide in God and abide in his words. So let's be that glass half full people. Let's understand that hardship often breeds opportunity. It breeds opportunity to be more positive in our lives and opportunity for many of us to serve where we would not get that opportunity to serve. And when we think about it, we're going to be rich. I hope this message was um, insightful in some ways and will give you pause for some thought. If you haven't become a child of God, we will offer you the invitation to come to Jesus this evening. If you know that you have to confess him as the son of God, repent of your former ways and be baptized for the remission of your sins, uh, please uh, uh, contact one of us and we will be at your beck and call. I hope that uh, our lesson and our whole service was uplifting uh, to you as it was for us to prepare it for you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we close. Dear Heavenly Father, bless us in our lives. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, especially when, when things just don't go the way we would hope that they would go. Let's turn those hardships into opportunities. Let's turn them into ways that we can serve and that we can be better for it. Let's persevere through those hardships and come out much, much better than we went in. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, this evening. Help us as we put our heads on our pillows this evening to think of you and to think of how much you mean to us in our lives that uh, you sent Jesus to us. He died for our sins. And he gives us, through his grace, the opportunity to live with, your, with you forever. Help us to understand that one day we're going to be rich. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.